So, Nancy, what are you doing on a day and a week, really, the last three weeks that that we've had here, with the Nasdaq looking like a seven percent decline for the week? Yeah, Sarah, thanks for having me. You know, we've been, we've had um, a hedge in place for our clients. We buy calls on the VIX and sell puts on the SPY. So that provides some protection and allows us to go in and add around the edges. We were in yesterday adding to some of our uh, tech names, some of our industrial names, and energy. And those have been our overweights along with materials. And I think you have to, you have to be prepared for uh, this kind of volatility when you've had three years in, in a row of robust uh, returns. 100% uh, total in three years. So we, we wanted to have protection and then we've moved more defensive uh, because we knew growth was was slowing. And so we wanted to barbell the portfolio with you know some of the, the, the sectors that will do well in a slowing environment and some that will do well as we're in the, in the middle of the cycle. And it seems to have worked pretty well for us. Mike, uh, in terms of uh, in terms of uh, earnings season continuing, is that the biggest threat at the moment when we see the reaction to, to Netflix and uh, and the way it's dragged others down as we get into next week and, and the sectors that are reporting are broadening out? It's tough to characterize it with a lot of confidence as just a risk because uh, I you know earnings season often goes in these kind of phases of, well, everyone knocks their expectations down, and then the following week there's a net relief. Uh, it's very difficult to generalize, as you know. Uh, but I don't think necessarily uh, we should expect it to just be uh, a spiral. Now, earnings forecast did not really move that much for the fourth quarter coming into reporting season. That could be a positive or a negative. But it seems to me when, you know, the S&P 500 is down 400 points in 17 days or something like that, it's not as if most of the stocks are priced for these huge, you know, beat and raise scenarios. So obviously it's got to figure it out sector by sector uh, and all the rest of it. But usually what happens is uh, on a net basis, Deutsche Bank said, you know, a week ago that over the course of earnings season, the tendency has been a slight upward drift in the S&P 500 with a ton of offsetting movement uh, below the surface because stocks go their own ways. That would probably be a relief uh, because it would mean a little bit less index level uh, selling the way we've seen the last couple of weeks. The drama continues. So we're, we're off the lows now on the Dow, down 309. Low is down about 461 points or so. Consumer staples and real estate sectors just turning green in the S&P 500. I would hardly call it a, a rebound, but I would just say we are off the lows with minutes to go here into the close, about 12 minutes to go. Nancy, wh wh where do you see the biggest opportunities in the sell-off? Would you be dipping your toe into a name like an Amazon, which is now more than 20 percent off its highs? Yes. I mean, if you have a three to five year time horizon like I do, Sarah, um, yes, indeed, I think this is an opportunity. I mean, we know that the ISM manufacturing is positively correlated to operating earnings. We know that's turned over. It's still expansionary, but slower. Um, we think we hit peak EPS and, and economic growth in Q2, peak monetary easing in, in Q3. And we think we may have hit peak inflation in, uh, in Q4, which is not to say it will go away. So we want to continue to, if things are slowing, we want to continue to add to some of the technology names, not the growth at any price, as I always say, but the growth at a reasonable price names that are growing their dividends. You know, take a look at a Microsoft that's trading at 34 times with 15 percent growth and 36 percent margins versus a P&G, which I also own, and McDonald's that are trading at 28 and 29 times earnings with four and a half and eight percent earnings growth. So I think you have to look longer than the scare. And by the way, historically, technology has actually been one of the best performing sectors if you go back and look at all the episodes of rising interest rates uh, than, than any of the others. So we are using this as an opportunity to add back into names we had been trimming uh, in the summer and fall.